Welcome back to the Dawn Show. So, you know, with the recent death of Philip Seymour Hoffman, celebrity drug addictions are unfortunately back in the headlines again. My guests today to talk about this and much more are Marilyn Russell, my girlfriend and the morning host of 95.7 Ben FM, and Neil Zorn is the entertainment reporter for the Delco, Delco Times, Delaware County <laughs> Times. Good to have you both here. Good to be here, as Glad always. To be here. So, you know, everybody's been talking about, and this is so tragic, a talented actor. Oh, um, the best. It's one of my favorite, The Master, Pirate Radio is one of, I've seen probably 30 flawless. times. Flawless. Right? Flawless, Capote, I mean, he's a magnificent actor. But there are two types of drug addiction. One is voluntary, and that is where you put in the Charlie Sheens and Robert Downey Jr., Jr. and they are both sad, but they are also lack some sympathy, I think. And Philip Seymour Hoffman, who, as you say, Marilyn, and uh, is the best actor of his time because he could take a small part and make it important. He just could turn that ordinary character into somebody who mattered a lot in the film. Yeah. But his addiction is not voluntary, really. His addiction is ended 22 years ago. It comes back because he's taking a pain medicine. He gets yeah. addicted to that. It's like alcohol or, you know, give me a cigarette. I'll probably smoke the rest right. of my life, you know, that type of thing. And it's, um, and I think that's, I think that's where the discussion comes in. I also really think that just not everybody is cut out for the fame that comes, and the celebrity that comes right. with this craft. Or the money, or the lifestyle, exactly, or the availability. Right. <laughs> some, some of us are very much more sensitive, oversensitive to all of that attention. Or, or have great appetites. Yeah. You don't go into, who goes into show business as a shy person? They all say they're shy. They have to walk on stage. They Then they have to go on runways and things like that. There's a lot of pressure. You think with the money and with the class that comes with it and with that you don't need a lot of stimulation, but some people do and sometimes it's just available. Oh, I do How many people you know who love to just totally go out and drink? <laughs> I think the more stimulation you get, the more you need and that's why it becomes a drug addiction. But with, yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, well, I'm so not a physician. I just know that, that craving of the attention right. and, and also the letdown that comes with doing a brilliant performance. And that's what I think. Suddenly mm -hmm. nothing. Because yeah. he became those characters, exactly. and I do think they, they're in this high mode mm -hmm. of performing. And, and yet we have actors character. who go above that fray. Daniel Day-Lewis, another right. brilliant actor who I've never heard of any sort of addiction. Well, but he's crazy. Hey, we're all a little crazy. Right? He, gets so in, he gets so into the characters. It's sort of like Robert Duvall. One time I saw Robert Duvall in a restaurant in New York, and he was eating with his hands. And I, and I thought, wow, it's happening. That's really? Is, is that what he's doing? So he said, well, you know he's in American Buffalo now, and that's the character. I said, oh, okay. but he's also in Joe Allen now. <laughs> he's in front of people. Give the man a fork and a knife and a napkin. <laughs> he's not on stage now. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the problem with somebody like Philip Seymour Hoffman is that he's so good, but, I, but he always had things going on. He was not only a, a movie actor, he was a stage actor. He was a director. He wrote. So you think, where is that stimulation? Where does that come? So, but the addiction was just overwhelming. And of course, to die the way he did, with the needle in oh, uh, the, the packages of the heroin, heroin all around, it's so, it's so dramatic. It's a story in itself. He's going to be played by somebody in a movie. Right. Well, you know, when you, you know, we've been showing pictures of other actors, too. You think of great, you know, you think of Belushi, and you think of, I mean, there are so uh -huh. many that we've been, you know, that we can think of who had oh, the heroin. And musicians. The right, list musicians. The right. long, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so... I just think, you know, it's, we know about the movie stars and the musicians, but a lot of people have addictions. Yeah. Julia and Roberts' I, is half sister. So what, I mean, do you think that this is good awareness or do you think it gets people to try something? I, I think any time the dialogue is opened, it's a good thing. I mm -hmm. have a, addiction in my family and I went through it with a very close family member and, and paying for his rehab and helping him sort of get over that hump. And I think any time a famous person, unfortunately, sad but true, at least it opens up the dialogue. And here we are talking about it and helping people try to Absolutely. find someone to speak to and, and find that recovery that they need and the help that they need. Yes, there's Belushi and yeah. Anna Nicole and, you know, the list The list just goes you know, on and, and if on. you're 27 and a rock star, you have to look out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you think Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, all those people were 27 years old. Kurt Cobain, of course, he's a suicide, so that's different, but that is also induced by... Oh, they're running away from the fame. 
and they're yeah. running away from all of that mess that it brings in one form or another. They mm -hmm. just don't want any part of it. They all need to be Meryl Streep, <laughs> well, <laughs> who is sort of like blameless life I just know, goes on. Life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. But you wonder if, you know, and I think of Whitney Houston, who I met years ago, mm -hmm. and she was so lovely, and people blamed Bobby Brown, in fact. But, you know, you think to yourselves, well, are we a society of enablers? Do we enable our own family members and friends? And are people like Whitney Houston? I mean, you, we saw her waste away, and nobody can Listen, intercept we're that. we're all struggling with some sort of addiction. You know, yeah. when was the last time you put down the Ben and Jerry's? I mean, <laughs> you know, and people that go to the gym, they get their pheromones and their rush right. from that. I don't know if you've been on the internet lately, but sex is everywhere. I mean, so I think we all have something. Unfortunately, heroin will kill you. Yeah. You know, it just is the worst drug. And I hear from people who have done it, my family members included, that you, the more you get do it, the more more you have to do and then consequently physically your body just can't handle that kind of stuff. Yeah. I've, you know, I've got no veins so it's not, <laughs> I tell people I must have been a junkie in another life. They can never find a vein to do a blood test so I've never dabbled, mm -hmm. thank God. But you wonder also about handlers. I mean everything about, what are they? They're looking yes, the other yes, way. yes, because all these people have entourages, all these people have Well that's what I'm saying, they're assistants. enablers. There's yeah, nobody right. in their life who says hey, you can't they do need this. Some, yeah. We all need that right. in our lives, one right. person to take away the Ben and Jerry's or whatever it is. The person I'm going to talk about isn't a famous person. He was a writer that would be, his name would be known in Philadelphia. But one time we were in New York and I said, you're not, I'm not going to buy you a drink tonight because he didn't have any money. And I said, I, 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 said I realize you're an alcoholic. Aww. I said, and you're going to hate me, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to, I need to stop you from self-destruction. And that's the thing is, is where the self-destruction comes in. And that's the whole performer psyche sometimes. Absolutely. Is that there are people who are just proud of what they do. And there are people who think acting isn't real work for some reason, right. or that you just need constant uh, stimulation, you just don't get it by opening a book. <laughs> well, there's a huge misperception too with the way people treat you and yeah. what they think is That's really true. your life. We got to take a quick break. We're going to be right back. More with Neil and Marilyn when we come right back.